All right, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to replace a secondary air injection pump. Um, now, I know this seems kind of intimidating that it's under the intake manifold. It's really not that bad. Um, I mean, it's re it's really not that bad at all, if you think about it. I mean, obviously, you're gonna have to disconnect your fuel line and all that, so don't be intimidated. We're gonna disconnect the injectors with the intake. We're not gonna separate that. We're gonna do it as one whole kit just because you know it's easier like that. So in this in this video, I'm gonna try to show you the best I can um, with the skill and technique that I have. This is my first time doing it on this vehicle and so forth. Um, now the secondary air injection pump, we have the code for P1445. Now that's gonna be on bank two, this is bank one and so forth. Um, now these guys are pretty known for, for going bad so they do sell a bypass kit. Um, I think it's like for a couple hundred bucks, but I'd rather get it done right and all that. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna remove the intake and so forth. Um, we're gonna get some things situated, but um, Toyota does sell like a uh, the parts. I would recommend getting it from Toyota. I know it costs a little bit extra money, but you're gonna get the part long lasting as versus an aftermarket part on one of these because it is a little tedious job to get to obviously it's not easy access like like something up here and so forth um if you haven't already give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future and we're going to go ahead and start this video right after the intro All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take off a few things first. Um, we got a few tens, so we're gonna start off with the whole intake tube, um, and also the little, obviously, cover right here. So we have, we would have one ten right there, ten right here. We're gonna take off this ten, and then we're gonna take off that ten too as well. Then, while we are here, normally I think you would have like a clip right there, but that's missing. Um, you would pop that out. You can access it from right there. There'll be like little tabs that you can squeeze. Um, this guy right here, we're going to go ahead and just squeeze that, move that, pull that back. And so forth. We have our PCV hose. This thing's on there pretty tight. Just spin this out. All right, so that'll come out with that. And then we'll pop that hose out. All right, cool, so we got that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just take off this 10, this 10, and then that 10, and then we'll get right back to the video. All right, so once you take off these two bolts, you're just gonna lift up this cover. We'll move that out the way. I took off this 10 millimeter bolt, and then obviously I loosened that one up, and then we're just gonna just pop this right out. Gosh, it's on there pretty tight. So I'll just wiggle it up on out all right cool all right, so next thing what we're going to go ahead and do we are going to be taking off some things from the passenger side um now this one's just optional but i'm just going to take it off just to give us some more leverage this is the coolant temperature sensor we're going to move that out the way um as for this guy, there's a little tab right there. I think it's more easier if we're able to. So the tabs right there, as you can see, so you just pop this tab right back. So you just get your finger, dive it in there or a flathead, just like that. So we got that one and the same thing for right over there. Then we have our vacuum switching valve. Uh, I think we're just going to unbolt. No, we're going to unbolt this as one whole unit. So we'll unbolt this one. I'm just going to take off this hose. Now, if your hose is stuck on there like mine, I'm just literally going to grab a plier. And then I'm not going to like try to like squeeze too hard. I'm just grabbing the hose just to break it free from the actual thing itself. 
Um, you can use this video as a reference where the hoses go. Um, usually mark it, but yeah. So now we're gonna go ahead and take off these two tens. And then we'll just move that over to the side just like that. And then again, we'll just pop out that little tab, same thing. So next thing what we're gonna go ahead and do, we are gonna go ahead and disconnect our injectors. So we have, you can see that. So there's four in total. Well, there's four in total on this side, but there's eight in total. So four and four. Um, so right here, we have our little tab. You can see that. So you're just gonna, just press this tab, open it like that. So literally this tab is just, you're just gonna squeeze right here and then pull that right out. So we're gonna do that for all four of these. And also there's another little connector that's right there. I think that's the cam sensor. And I'm just gonna Use a flathead. Make sure you don't pry on it too much. So we have our, our cam sensor right here. You can either take this off, but we're just gonna leave it on there because obviously it's probably not gonna be in our way right now. Um, so just keep going on and taking off the four. All right, so we got everything from right there. Um, this is probably gonna be your most tedious one back there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take off this little hose right here. Now be very careful on taking this out. Cause if this guy breaks, um, yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be a different story. Now if you feel like it's gonna break, go ahead and cut the hose. The hose is actually more cheaper than the, the unit itself, so. Or this one, we can actually take it off from right here and take it as one whole unit. I don't know if you guys saw that. All right, so for this hose right here, we're gonna keep it on because we don't wanna break this. So we just wanna be very less you know, we want to be on the more promising side. So what I did was I just unclamped this piece right here and just pulled that back, move that over there. And then we're going to go ahead and unplug this just like that. And then we'll take off this 10. And then move it with that harness. And I believe we are gonna take off our brake booster. Well, I think this can just slide right up on out. All right, so we'll move that out the way. Then I think it's our knock sensor harness. We're gonna just go ahead and move this out the way. All right, so pretty much same thing. We're gonna go ahead and take off our injector harness. Same setup as the, um, the driver's side.
All right, the next thing we're gonna go ahead and take off our throttle body connector. Oh, we got coolant going to this guy. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, I don't wanna deal with the whole cooling system, so I'm just gonna unbolt the throttle body. So we're gonna have four 10 mils. So we have one right here, one right there, one on the bottom, and then one right down below. And then we're just gonna go ahead and pull this guy right back. Now I'm only doing this is because I don't wanna deal with the whole cooling system. I don't wanna touch it. So all right, so now that's a lot easier. All right, so now before we take out the fuel line, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal on our battery. So negative only. And then we'll just, God. If your battery is stuck like that, like mine, you're just going to open it up with the flathead and then we'll just be able to pop it right out. So coming on the driver's side, we're going to have um, two fuel lines. Um, we're going to have a feed line, which I think is one of them is our feed line. I don't know which one. Um, yeah, I don't know which one's our feed line, but what we can do is, um, I was looking right now, we can disconnect it from right here. So obviously the one with the little orange tab, tab is going to be on the inner side and then the one without it is, um, going to be on the, the left side. So right here, we are going to pop these out of there. So we're just gonna literally slide these guys right back. Same thing, these are like little protector covers. Then we have some quick tabs. So right there, I don't know if you can see it. So we're gonna go ahead and squeeze. There's one on the, I think there's one on the opposite side where my index finger is. So we're just gonna go ahead and squeeze that right there. Oh, be careful with your eyes. So. I'm just gonna push down a little bit, squeeze that, and then um, take it right up on out. Now fuel is gonna come out. Make sure you have a rag. And same thing for the other side, the, the one with the blue tab, we're just gonna repeat the same thing. Just squeeze that right out and so forth. Um, if you don't disconnect your battery, <laughs> if you don't disconnect your battery in this process and you put the key in the out position, you're gonna have fuel all over the place. All right, so I think at this point, we're ready to start unbolting the intake manifold. Now, I believe there's gonna be 10 bolts. So those are gonna be 12 millimeters. So we're gonna have one right there. So there's gonna be a couple nuts first and then bolts. So we have one 10 right there, two, three, four, and then there should be, I think that's it right here. Um, yeah, I think that's it. There might be four, eight in total. So we have one right there, one right there, one right there. There's another one right there. And then there's one right back there, right next to that injector. So right back there. So that's one, two, three, four, five on that side. And I think there is 10, I think I'm missing one. So one, two, three, four. There might be one back there, like if I could see it. <clears throat> yeah, oh, I just couldn't see, it's pretty dirty. So it's right next to that inject there. It's not that bolt, but it's the one right here under this fuel rail. I don't know if you guys can see that. You get that zoomed in. So you see that bolt right there that's dirty? So it's not this one, it's that one right there. So yeah, 10 in total. So we're gonna go ahead and take those off. And I think I said um, 10 millimeter, I meant to say 12. So those are all 12, by the way. All right, so for the nuts, I would recommend having a magnet so you don't drop the nuts just in case.
All right, so we got all the bolts out. Probably the one that's gonna probably be your most hardest is gonna be that one in the back. You just gotta get it in between the harness. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and just lift this guy up. And let's see how this goes. Do we have anything back here that is holding this? Looks like the wire harness. So there is a 10 millimeter back there. It's like right here, I don't know if you guys can see that. So right here, we're gonna take off this 10 millimeter. And then that should separate us from that. And I think that's it. Let's see if we can pop this guy on out. So I got one PCV hose right here. We're gonna take that guy off, I didn't see that. And I think what else is holding us is our fuel line. So we'll pop these guys right off. We gotta get this under the harness. So we can slide it out just like that. So when we put it in, obviously same procedure. So this hose is going between um, this injector both inject their harnesses and then the other ones like on the outside of it just so you're aware when we put this guy back all right so coming right back here here's our um switching valves so i believe there's like two 10 millimeters holding it so yeah there's two tens ah. so there's one right here and then there's like one more bolt like right on the opposite side and then we have 110 right here and then we have another one on the bottom so I'll, i won't i can't show that right now but i will show that in a little bit so i'm going to take off those and then yeah All right, so we got both bolts out. So, I mean, that was a little tedious. So to get those ones out, I had a little flex head, quarter inch ratchet with obviously a little 10 mil. And then obviously that was just pretty easy to get out. Make sure you're using a six point and not a 12 point. So six points, literally six sides and not the little star shaped one. Um, all right, so now that we got that guy up on out, we're just going to slide this guy right over here. Probably move out this hose out the way. It's a little bit hard to uh, do this while trying to lay on the truck. All right, 
So, there we have it. Now you're gonna check to see if you have any debris in your lines, which I don't. And we're gonna go ahead and test this guy and I'll show you how to test this one. All right, so I'm using the hand pump vacuum. I think you can rent these from your auto parts store. Um, all right, so I want you guys to see, so I'm gonna go ahead and press this gauge and you're supposed to see that little pipe move. So let's go ahead and press it. So you see how it's moving? So you need to make sure it opens up all the way and it can hold the vacuum. Now, if it doesn't open at all, then we know we have this one as the issue, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the other one. But this is the one that's actually on this bank, which should, um, it's kind of tripping me out because it says bank two. And obviously cylinder number two is over here, or I think that's, how, yeah, the firing order should be over here. Cylinder one, or cylinder two. Um, well, I don't know the firing order. Um, but yeah. So I don't get how it's saying stuck closed unless that there's like something else going on. But on that sense, there we have that. So I'll get right back to the video on pulling out the other one. So the way how I took off the one over there, um, basically I got my wrench and then I access everything from, like I just had my hand right here with the, with the quarter inch ratchet and I was able to take it off pretty easy just like that. All right, so I got this hooked up and so forth. Just want you guys to see this. So this is, we already tested out this one. This one's good. And so we're gonna go ahead and test out this one. So I want you guys to see this. So I'm gonna go ahead and actuate it. Now obviously you can see it, but look at my vacuum gauge, it's dropping down. So it's not even holding vacuum. So the, def the diaphragm inside of it is actually bad. So this would cause us to have this stuck code. Um, obviously it's, you know, it's bad, it's semi working, but it just, it can't hold a vacuum. So this piece right up here is bad. So unlike the other one, we can't replace that, but uh, there's like, I think there's like another model where we can replace just this. So I'm gonna go ahead and confirm with my customers, see what they wanna do. We're gonna get the original equipment just because we don't wanna go ahead and do the job um, uh, twice and so forth. But um, yeah, we'll get right back to the video and so forth. These guys right here, you don't have to buy these again. The gaskets, you can actually reuse those. So just so you're aware. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and switch over our new gaskets. Here's our new um, unit from the dealership. So they're about like around 150. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and switch over our gaskets again. Again, we can reuse these, they're not that bad. Um, so that's no problem. So we'll just go ahead and make sure that we can switch these in. Now, if you get aftermarkets, they might not come like that. And then we'll put this one right here. Make sure all the bolt holes line up. Um, if your gasket is falling down, what you can do is just pull it out and then kind of squeeze it a little bit. Oops, sorry. Just squeeze these little tabs and then we'll just insert them. So this one, I got to squeeze a little bit more. All right. So if they're falling off, just make sure you squeeze the little tabs. Um, Switch these over. So now the way how I'm squeezing the tabs is just I'm kind of putting my thumb right there and I'm squeezing just the tabs. You're not squeezing them a lot. I mean, you're just literally just squeezing them just a little bit just so we can swap them over just like that. All right, so now we're ready for the reinstall. All right, so for the reinstall, um, really nothing too complicated very simple so we're gonna go ahead and start off with the one on the driver side and then I'm gonna actually put the bolts on it first also one thing I forgot to mention don't make sure uh, make sure you cover up your port holes for the intake um, just in case if any debris comes in I'm not doing that because obviously I'm being pretty cautious around that 
But still, I mean, you never know. I know, guys, I should be more precautious on that, but yeah. Um, so there is a left and the right for these. Make sure that this guy is facing towards you. So this one's gonna be for the passenger side. And this one's gonna be our driver side. So we're gonna go ahead and just sneak this. Can I sneak this right through here? Let's see, let's see. I didn't put it through there last time. So guess not. Guess we are gonna fit it right through here. So what you're going to be doing is you're only going to be hand tightening these guys. So you're going to start off a couple threads. Then once you start off your couple threads, then we're going to go ahead and tighten down the side ones. So now we're going to go ahead and put for a little side pass ones. So now we'll go ahead and thread those in. So if you need to, you can wiggle this guy and I think you can bend the pipe a little bit. So I'm just going to push down the pipe. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the side first. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten up the, the top bolts now. So now that one we're gonna get from the side. All right, so same thing, we're gonna go ahead and put in this guy. Now this is obviously is going to face towards that pipe, so we'll get things going. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put on our hoses. Obviously the short one's gonna go with the short one. Obviously the other one had a white mark. So we are set on that. And set on that. And voila. All right, so now we're ready to reverse the order. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and clean up our little area. So we're gonna take off our old gasket and just toss that to the side. And then I'm just gonna get a, a brake cleaner and then spray on my rag. Then we're just gonna go ahead and clean up our area, just around it. 
just so it's all nice and clean. Then right here, I noticed that we have a little pin that should be on the, the actual intake itself. So we'll save that to the side. All right, so kind of doing this from like an upside down point. I don't want to flip it over. Um, or the intake, I don't want to flip over. So we're going to go ahead and just slap in our gasket. Now we have these little notches right here. And then we're just going to go ahead and insert these bad boys right there. Just like that. And then we'll do that for all of them. Now, if you flip this upside down, you might have fuel coming out. Just be warned and aware. And then we're going to basically repeat the same thing from the, ins the other side. So make sure these are facing towards the inside. All right, so we're going to go ahead and drop down our intake manifold. So remember, we got to go in diving and then remember our hoses are gonna have to one hose is gonna have to go in through here and then the other hose is gonna go back there so let's go ahead and get this down So before you fully seat down your, your intake, you're going to go right under and then you're going to go ahead and inspect and make sure your intake gasket's still in place because if not, well guess what, you're going to have a huge vacuum leak. And once you're in, well you're in so we're gonna go ahead and put down our all our bolts now if you're having a hard time putting them in you can use a magnet and just to drop them in and then make sure you hand tighten everything first I'm going to start off with the bolts in the middle. All right, so right here, our little harness, um, we gotta go ahead and put on our little 10 millimeter bolt. Put our connector right now, mine as well, since we're there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and connect our little EVAP piece. We'll connect this one too as well. Then I'm going to go ahead and connect my injector harness on this side, or you can do both sides, doesn't matter. I'm just going to do this side for right now. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and connect my fuel lines. Now obviously the one with the blue tab is going to be on the inner side and the one with the yellow tab is going to be on the outer side.
So you hear those clip and then try pulling them back. If they pull back, then you need to go ahead and fix yourself and see what the heck's going on. Then we're gonna connect our EVAP hose. And then we'll just connect our little fittings right here. Well, that didn't have broken. Then I'm gonna go ahead and connect our little bracket that goes down right there. This piece will be facing up towards you. Or I'm sorry, it'll be facing down. Then we're gonna put our little PCV hose right here. And then we're gonna just move down our little clamp. I think that's it for this side for right now. Just make sure you inspect everything. Nothing is left unconnected. All right, so now as for this side, we're gonna just connect our injectors. And then our harness, we're gonna just clip these guys back right in. Then we're gonna go ahead and swing this guy right over here. All right, so looking good, looking good. Then we have a, a hose that's coming from under the intake manifold. That is gonna go right in here. All right, then we're gonna connect our coolant temperature sensor. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and connect, we're gonna take off our um, throttle body gasket. So we're gonna just go ahead and put in our new one. And get this at the dealership. They're not that expensive. We'll just put that right in there. Um, if you wanted to, you can clean your, your throttle body i'm not going to clean it um just because of the amount of miles it has i don't want it messing up and then me re be responsible for it um so we're going to go ahead and connect our connector make sure it clips then there's like a little little notch right here make sure that that is fully seated before doing anything crazy. So we're just gonna go ahead and thread in everything by hand. Make sure you are fully seated. Make sure all four bolts are fully in before doing anything. All right, so now we're gonna connect our little PCV hose right in here. And I don't know why this guy was loose. We'll just tighten it down for now. Or just want to make sure that this fits. So I'm just going to tighten up this bolt right back here. Just so it doesn't move. So we have this coming in and out. So I'm gonna grab my brake booster hose, swing it right over and just slide it right up in here. All right. Now, I think at this point we are ready to hook up our intake box or our, our intake. So obviously we're just gonna go ahead and go with this side in first. And then we're just gonna pull this down and then bring it. I'm just gonna peel it back just a little bit and then wiggle it right in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and connect our PCV hose that's going to go right here. And then we're going to connect this hose right here. So this, this hose that goes from the fuel pressure regulator to right here. 
And then we have one more hose that's gonna go from above where the power steering is to right here. And then, I think we're golden on that. So, now we're gonna go ahead and put on, oh, we gotta still tighten down this guy right here. I'll do that. And then we're gonna go ahead and connect our negative terminal. We are all said and done. All right, so you're gonna come up in the vehicle and then before we even start it, we're gonna just cycle it. So what we're doing right now is we're priming up the fuel system. So we're just gonna keep priming it. We're gonna do this about like three times. And then on the fourth time, we're gonna go ahead and start it, so. And voila. So you should hear the secondary air pump turn on. Which I don't hear it turn on. Which is kind of weird. Let me get right back to the video. Um, I don't hear the air pump. It must be either it's working or because I pulled up all the vacuum from the intake and all that. So let me get back to I might be just over tripping it. So I was able to test out the code um, just to make sure nothing else was happening. So obviously you can see P11, I'm um, at P1445. Um, status normal checks results okay so that means it is complete and nothing happened during that time and then obviously we would go through read codes faults no trouble codes and so forth um, but yeah if this video helped you out give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future and thanks for watching